this is our cardiac monitor. This kind of is uh, this. This is our cardiac monitor. This is what allows us to really diagnose um, or take a look at what a patient's heart is doing and then make very important treatment decisions based off of this. And this is something that a lot of time is spent uh, analyzing and understanding in paramedic school. So we get to look at what a patient's heart is doing electrically, and then this monitor also allows us to do a lot of other things that we can monitor the patient, like um, how much oxygen is in their blood, uh, something we call end tidal CO2, so how much CO2, carbon dioxide, they're actually blowing out of their lungs, and that tells us physiologically how somebody's doing. Um, it also do blood pressures for us, and does a, a, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so we can actually, we'll, uh, we'll start off by kind of hooking me up and we can see how these things go. We'll go from uh, basic to complex. So this is like a, uh, this is just your standard blood pressure cuff um, that you would uh, have at the doctor's office. And this machine, uh, we can actually set, it'll take a blood pressure for us and we can set it to take blood pressures at regular intervals, whatever we want. So this allows us to monitor a patient's blood pressure kind of in real time while they're on the ambulance. and. Uh, get a sense of how their vital signs are changing as we're treating them. So, you want to help me here? There you go. Yeah, thank you very much. So we'll do that and I'll just start taking a blood pressure while I keep talking. Uh, the other thing that we have is, this is called capnography and there's a little light in here. It's actually an infrared light and when you put this on a patient's finger, what this does is it measures how much oxygen is in their blood. Um, that's kind of a really simple way of saying it, but it lets us know if somebody's complaining of breathing problems or they might have smoke inhalation or something like that. This gives us the clue about how much oxygen uh, is actually in their blood. And this, now that these numbers are popping up, uh, down here my blood pressure is being taken. 137 over 92 is my current blood pressure. It's a little high right now because I'm on camera. Up here, uh, 97, that's a percentage. That's my oxygen saturation. So it's telling me, as a percentage, how much oxygen I have on my little hemoglobins, and it's 97%. So that's pretty good. It means I'm breathing good, I'm moving air, and I've got good gas exchange down in my lungs. And then up here, uh, it's kind of bouncing around a little bit, but that's 79, that's beats per minute. Uh, now it's going up. And that's how fast my heart is beating. Again, it's a little out of the elevated because I'm on camera. So this is kind of the, the basic stuff that we uh, look at a patient with. Once we start getting into cardiac monitoring, if anybody's ever been to the doctor and they've had an EKG or a stress test or something like that, they'll be familiar with these electrodes. Um, and they're just like that. They're an electrode and what they do is they measure the electricity that's flowing through your heart. So we can actually, we can actually stick some electrodes on me and we'll see what my heart is doing. A lot of things in our bodies, we, we have a lot of proteins and a lot of chemicals in our body, but uh, all of our muscles, all of our muscles and all of our nerves and things like that are controlled through electricity. Very, very small amounts of electricity and this actually picks it up. And this is designed to pick up what's going through our heart. So once I get, I'm gonna have to put some on my legs here, excuse me for a moment. All right, I'll stop moving around here. And here we'll see on the screen, see those little blips? That's actually the electrical activity that's happening in my heart right now. And as a paramedic, we can see those blips and we can interpret them and we can know exactly electrically how healthy someone's heart is. When somebody has um, a fast heart rate, we see that because there's more blips. Or if somebody's having a heart attack, we'll actually attach more electrodes to somebody's chest and we'll take what's uh, called different views of the heart. So we can actually tell if somebody's having a heart attack and then we can tell exactly the spot on that heart where that heart attack is occurring. And based on those things, we actually give different medications uh, depending on what we find. And those are things, that's something that paramedics are trained to do that EMT basics aren't and something that South County can do now that were a paramedic service that the previous services couldn't do. Uh, and then, if we want to get really fancy, this, and you'll notice it gets a little, uh, gets a little jumpy there, that's because I'm moving around. 
just like I said, everything has to do with electricity. What we're seeing, those little wiggles, it's also kind of picking up the electrical impulses in my muscles. So that's why that's doing that. But we'll put this on me next. And just like this thing on my finger measures the oxygen attached to my blood, this is going to measure This is going to measure how much CO2 I'm blowing out of my lungs. And this goes in here. And this will show up on the bottom here. And it will show up as a little graph in a second. And you'll notice as I'm breathing, that's called a waveform, and it's measuring millimeters of mercury, how much CO2 I'm blowing off, and a normal amount is between 35 and 45 millimeters of mercury. That sounds complicated, it kind of is, and that's something that paramedics learned in school, but you'll see right here that yellow number, 37, 38, um, and that means I'm right in that golden spot of between 35 and 45. This tells us a lot about what somebody's doing physiologically. If somebody has uh, COPD, uh, emphysema, asthma, all those things, we can actually find out how somebody's doing. We can even find out if somebody is in cardiac arrest, how long they've been in cardiac arrest, and we can start to anticipate when we're going to be able to resuscitate them based on all of these numbers and uh, how they change over time. So this is kind of all of our assessment stuff all on one person right here working together and what this machine also allows us to do is not only assess a patient but also treat them so I'm gonna take this off real fast just so I don't hyperventilate trying to show off there once we assess a patient with this machine and we look at their heart rate if we see a certain type of heart condition, and this is something that paramedics are trained to interpret, if we see a certain heart condition, sometimes the indication for that treatment is to actually shock their heart. So just like an AED, an automatic external defibrillator that people learn about when you do CPR, this does something similar, but it's completely manual. There's nothing automatic about that. And that's because paramedics are trained to treat... Oh. I'll turn that off for you. It thinks I stopped breathing. I was going to say it's flatline. That's right. Ah. <clears throat> so just like an automatic external defibrillator that you learn about when you learn CPR, this is a manual defibrillator. And that means that a paramedic is trained to do everything themselves, interpret the rhythm, and just figure out how much electricity and when to deliver it. And that's because we can actually give electricity in different amounts based on different rhythms that an AED can't actually do on its own. So... Once we use the machine to figure out what's wrong with the patient, if there's something wrong with the patient, um, we can actually turn to this side of the machine over here and all these, these bright yellow and orange buttons, and that's actually how we can deliver a shock, uh, just like an AED would, but the paramedic makes a decision about when he or she wants to shock and treat a patient.